Hello and welcome everyone. More Sivo main action coming at you from Europe. We've got Arctic Esports, the main team here. The Finn Stack versus Team Orglis coming at you from Hungary here on a train. In this best of three, this will be the first map. It is the pick of Arctic Esports as they are starting on the T side. I am I am alone. I am, what is the what's the show? Naked and alone, or is it Naked and Afraid? what I am today. Solo casting this first best of three. Vince and or Metas, whatever name you know him by, should be showing up for the second series of the day. But here we are holding out on the pistol round. I call them RC. It's like so much easier. Or I guess Arctic's the same syllables. Holding out, being very patient, hoping for some CT aggression so they can find a frag and capitalize upon it. Uh, they're not going to be gifted that though. Flashy will spot them, he'll drop his smoke in response, gonna delay the already delayed terrorists a bit more. The bomb shifting to the inner hallways, holding outside, we've got No Fear, Dead Fox, Barcoder playing at Ivy. Our inner players will be Flashy and watch him nay nay. Playing both of them, playing back at Z, P2K and USP, gonna use the natural advantages of their guns. This nay coming in, he's gonna do a considerable amount of damage to two players, but the first kill of the round will go to Sagerton. Oftentimes we call that man Swaggerton, so he's a definitely a player to watch out for. So Ney is down, gonna go for this retake. Uh, armor on majority of the CT players as they're pushing in. Swaggerton peeks out real quick, takes down Barcoder, dead Fox now to battle with Twista, running out of ammunition, reloading, Flashy moving ahead now. Will spot the bomb, but the Molotov comes out off the door from Zori, actually burns Flashy. Oh my gosh, he gets a double kill with the Molotov. Woo. No fear he's going to get a kill, but all for naught at this point. He's got a kit, but is out of time. So, boom, goes the dynamite. And Saw will stay alive, but not like it really matters. Finds himself a USP. That's 1-0 for Arctic. MP9's coming out on the force buy from Orglis. Got a Deagle 5.7 P250 on Dead Fox, so they are trying to force up. Let's see if it's going to be effective. And it might be effective, because you have these upgraded pistols. Arctic have went for majority rifles. Twista, I guess, is the man to make the difference. He's got the MP7, that's the gun that was so obviously buffed to counter the pistol force ups. Let's see what Twista can do. We might have to do a lot. Terrorist going to remain playing slow as these first three rounds are extremely important for Terrorist. I mean, you get three rounds, you're, you're basically done on train. Hopefully you can get two more, get those five rounds. And if you're wondering about the maps, train was the pick here for Arctic, whose logo already, always reminds me of Ice Climbers from Super Smash Bros. There just needs to be two of them, I guess. Which they have two teams, so I, uh, I suppose it works out. And uh, Orglis actually picked Cobble, and the third decider map was between Cash, Mirage, and Dust 2. And it will be Dust 2. So that's the maps for the best of three. Dead Fox is already down, taken out by 7. Maybe X7, I'm not sure if he wants that pronounced. Look at Nay. Watch him Nay. From behind the E-Box, he gets one. Actually, no, he just assists it's Barcoder from a distance that takes him, to, takes him out with the Deagle. Flash is going to push with the smoke, trying to surprise the Terrace. There's too many alive, and that means the smoke was being watched. And it is, again, just Barcoder. I mean, he does have 1,700 bucks to his name. You might want to consider saving, but it gets shot down through the side of the old bomb train. And that's Zori picking up his... That's his third kill, and we know he got two with Molotov. How many does he have overall? Just three. So that's his first kill with the gun. And it's 2-0. Will be 3-0 unless something crazy happens, but we've already seen how Arctic are playing. They're taking it slow. They're being very methodical. They're doing their research, and as Spottington called it the other day, the uh, the Scooby-Doo split up in search for clues, and I think that is just the best thing ever uh, to call these rounds. It's exactly what you want to do. Split up, look for information, try to get a read on your opponent. You don't want to walk into a stack. Of which, there is one inside. They're playing four inside with just flashy spotting outside. That's what the Hungarians are up to today. No fear, Will T. There's actually two running at him and Saw will fall to the aggression of the CT. So nicely done. Unfortunately, 
not able to get a rifle in their hands. And it's going to be Flashy now as Arctic flip it around the other way. They've already planted outside. Flashy knows they're here but hasn't actually spotted anybody and gets in before he can even peek out. Sagarthan catches Nay and Dead Fox and Barcoder. Really nothing to live for again, just try to get some exits. Dead Fox might want to save the Galil and Barcoder is hitting the shower as it appears. And um, let's see, Sagarton down at the back of Ivy, X7 below the CTs. He's at T middle right now, and it appears that they will escape. The CTs, that is, with their lives. Twist and Sagarton now getting somewhat close to these guys. CTs might be nervous, but they will be surviving into round four with one Galil, and that's going to go a long way. That'll allow Dead Fox. I guess he won't have to drop. He'll be able to get full nades and a Kevlar and a kit at least with his 4600 just going straight to utility. And hey, I mean, the Gleal's one, not one shot to the head, but neither are any of the M4s. It just suffers a bit with the accuracy and a little bit more foreign spray pattern. That Fox should be okay. Important round for both teams, of course. This allows Arctic to pretty much seal their, their fate on their T side. If they get another win here, it should be the two for one. That'll let them get that 5-0 score line. Or it's Orglis who will finally fight back and, of course, try to hold Arctic at these three rounds. Dead Fox. Oh, he's got to caught on the ladder. Mm. So the Galil is down. Zore before that took down Nay with the op. Five on three right now. No fear pushed up aggressively. He's going to have to be very aggressive, though. I mean, you're two men down, CT side train. This can be difficult. All the terrorists need to do is group together and death ball onto a site. And as I like to say, just, just channel your inner Protoss. Even though that game's dead. But we'll keep it at a Brood War reference. The game will always live. Okay, so X7 at T middle. Sagarton throwing some flashes outside, and here they go, executing into the outer train yard. No fear on the bombs. They bark Hoder at Ivy. Needed to make a difference, but couldn't. No fear also goes down, not getting a kill, and it's Flashy with the M4A4 and Kevlar. No kit, no chance on this round. 1v2s on train are pretty much impossible from Flashy's perspective, let alone a 1v5. He does find two, but there's Twista to shut him down. 4 0 for Arctic. Should be the 5-0 coming up, looking at the money, yeah, low to mid, well, okay, high 2Ks, mid 3Ks, and Dead Fox, just because he had that Galil from a round ago, has 5K, but no one, well, Dead Fox, I guess, could go for a rifle, but really, he does pick up the FAMAS, but I just disagree with that, it's so much more money, the 5-7 is pretty much just as good, if not better. And he doesn't even have Kevlar, so he goes FAMAS. Like, why not drop this to a, to No Fear and then take No Fear's P250? That just seems so much better. And again, Arctic continuing to play this map with the slow style. And working out nicely for them. And especially on this round. The one to again not run into a stack. It is generally you play just one, maybe two people in or on train. You can see the stacking get a little bit with barcoder and Z, who now rotates back to the outer train yard. Dead Fox up on green. Who else is supporting him? There's Nay down in old hell. And I wonder what the CTs need to do to make this adjustment. I think. Uh, maybe some, once they get guns in their hands, to be honest, they've never really had a decent rifle round. Uh, the first real rifle round should be coming up in this next round. Especially if they win here, Dead Fox and Barcoder both getting frags. Flashy now chiming in, and this one the Terrace really starts to sweat. At this point, the round is over. Flashy finds another frag, pushing up in lower, grabs the Molotov from inside the Molotov. A regular Prometheus right there. And that's the first round of the map for the CTs. Very important. Somehow winning with a very, very desperate uh, force up. Even if I'm off with no armor, which I will stand by. I think that was a very questionable purchase. It does work out as Dead Fox finds a kill. Arctic, of course, got themselves into a position where they could buy after a loss. That's where we see them now. And it's Arctic that can make a very easy transition in this game. They've been playing slow. Very patient. They could easily 
just step on the gas and speed it up and maybe catch Orglis off guard. But we won't be seeing it yet. They're going to go back to the tried and true and try to get a fifth round their old-fashioned way. This is the first round where Orglis actually have stuff to work with. I'd like to see them maybe control Ivy a bit more. We've seen Arctic are very content. Of course, we have more information than Orglis do, but... They're pretty content to just sit in those white halls and, and wait a really long time. So if Orglis start, you know, doing a quick double push at Ivy at the start of this round, kill one person there, we'll realize nobody's there. That's all the information you need. You'll just realize by default, hey, you know, everyone's got to be up in those white halls, so let's stack up in or watch, watch, watch ladder and have Ivy, you know, push forward so they can't swing back the team middle. No Fear finding the first shot. That's over at Ivy. Saw will even it up. Now No Fear caught out in the open. Wants to retreat behind the red train. Does do just that. Barcoder on the opposite side of a smoke from Sagerton, who's now pushing out. Finds a kill on Renee. No Fear moving up. Taken out by Saw and Arctic as they explode onto the outer bomb site with a nice split from Ladder. Sending one Ivy and three out the mid room. Get the bomb down to the outer bomb site. Barcoder, oh, not quite able to bring down Saw. Gets into 40 HP. Flashy will finish him off from Z Connector with that AK. Barcoder moving out. Oh, and Sagerton with a one-shot kill from the AK in old hell. Too strong for Barcoder. He's been checked out. Solid reference. Flashy, one versus three. Just going to want to save. Oh, for some reason, running out onto this bomb site. You got no kit. Oh, I actually does have a kit, but you got no time. And you're three seconds short. That was ambitious. Um... Saving that would have gone a long way because you're going to run into a situation where Barcoder is poor. Flashy, I guess, can drop a FAMAS, but saving that weapon would have been huge. You'd have a full rifle round coming up instead. Maybe they're getting desperate since they're losing by four rounds on their CT side. But that was a mistake, just straight up. Should have saved that gun. And you would have had no fear in Barcoder with guns instead of the Eagles. Nade coming over, 7 sees it, will fall back. And again, same thing, everybody, you got one guy, there's X7, watching middle, Sagerton over at Ivy. This is the same setup they use every round. If Orglis just put a little more emphasis on controlling Ivy, push this with two people, trade out Sagerton, 4 on 4, plus you have information. Yes, even numbers generally favor the terrorists, but... And, they need to, I mean, they could also just get that kill and have a 5 on 4 with the information that, hey, no one's Ivy, I wonder where they are. It's gotta be mid room or Whitehalls. I guess, I don't know who smoked that is actually. Whether they dropped it or if uh, Sagerton threw that smoke at Ivy before he left. No fear, pushed up aggressive. With that 5-7, as you might expect, Dead Fox holding back with the op, barcoder with the deagle behind him. So not very fortified outside, you got two of your pistols there, plus the op, and both rifles inside have fallen. Twista and Seven bringing down Flashy and Nay. Dead Fox both barcoder and no fear left on their own. And really should save, like, 3v5 retake. Probably not going to happen given the way this game's been going, but Sagerton already in behind the CTs. He doesn't know that, of course. He turns around and actually goes the wrong way. Dead Fox now ringing out a kill. Found two. Sagerton can move in from behind on the flank. There's actually some hope now behind this 3v5 retake. If it wasn't for the positioning of Sagerton, he's missing these shots. Tracks Dead Fox enough. That saw can capitalize on the kill. And the CTs, you know, while doing a pretty good job of getting these frags, unfortunately, are out of time. No fear is going to go down to the spray of Sagerton. And it's just Barcoder to survive. Barcoder with. Five kills, Flashy with five, No Fear with five, Dead Fox with three, and well, maybe you don't watch him, Nene, because he's got zero frags. And let's see, uh, somewhat equal distribution still in the first seven rounds. Twista only with two, but where is Twista playing? Oh, I guess he's a terrorist. Like, not entering, or maybe is entry fragging and just not getting him. Running it first through the smoke. And seven to go down. Nay with the USP frag. There's his first kill, and he's come at a better time again on an eco round. Sagerton making up for this, expecting Barcoder to be in that smoke. He's still shooting through it. Oh, Barcoder with the deagle. 
saying hello one last time. Zori says the op will hit either the no scope or the quick scope. And it seems like he's got a pretty good read on what Dead Fox is up to. Ooh, that spot so much taken out mid flight by Dead Fox and Orglis's two rounds coming off of pistol force ups, upgraded pistols, some pistol armors. So that's nice that they've won two rounds like that, but what is not nice is the statistic that they have won zero rifle rounds. It doesn't really, uh, it doesn't bode very well for your CT half. As good as winning Eco's feels, not really good if you're not winning any rifle rounds. And Sagratin energized. I don't know if they tried to work Ivy a little bit more that round. Uh, it doesn't seem like anyone pushed down. They just double peaked Barcoder and Dead Fox. And it's Sagarton to uh, them at bay. Gets one frag. Dead Fox actually still holding out. But he's on the wrong side. If Sagarton peaks this, it will be Dead Fox who will be required to hit a flick shot. I guess you can kind of see him pacing back and forth, thinking about maybe giving it the old re-peak. Might want to let his teammates do the distracting, but it's Sahu cannot get out of ladder room. No fear. Cops him down. Nay and no fear with a nice crossfire. No fear doing some more. And Nay finds a good set. But it's Sagerton in X7. Wow. Sagerton with three kills. What a key round. Flashy in a 1v2. It won't be easy, but at least it's it's definitely possible here. The bomb has not yet been planted. But oh, peeks out right into X7, who is still on the lookout for one more CT playing outer. And that round pretty much. All the credit of Sagerton, and you can see why we call the man Swaggerton. He's 13 and 3 right now, and it's 7 to 2 for Arctic Esports on train. It is their map of pick, but it's also still T side train. And very fast play now. That's what I was kind of waiting for. Oh, but it's. Oh. Another broken round with pistols and some rifles, and it might be another one that Orgulus can win. Uh, a quick outer explode from the Terrace doesn't really pan out, and it leaves it in a three-on-three, -three, so it's always going to favor the Terrace still slightly. Uh, here's Flashy from behind. He won't stop the bomb from going down, but he evens it back up to a 2v2 retake. No kits on uh, Dead Fox or Flashy, though, and Zori just keeps hitting the key op, sh key op shots into the mid and late round scenarios. So, 8-2. Looking uh, pretty dire right now for Orgulus. They've already, I'm sure you guys are capable of, of simple math, but Arctic Esports have officially won the half of those eight rounds. And Orgulus, based on the rounds they have won, probably have the best chance to win this round. Have just pistols. No armor at all this time, though. So it's going to be a bit harder. Here we go, some aggression, but Zori's right there. Does take a P250 to the face, down to 6 HP. Flashy, also playing a close angle, but it'll be Sagerton who just keeps on fragging. I think that's his 15th. Well, that's a lie. I thought it was his 14th, but I, I pressed tab before I finished that sentence and realized he had a 15. I don't want to lie to you guys. Oh, just three people up right now. Arctic still playing careful. You like to see that. I mean, it, it is into the playoffs now. You're in a best of three. Still in the upper bracket, but Arctic taking no chances here. You know, they're, they're kind of dominating this game, but still, they're, they're not playing with no respect. Similar to what we saw yesterday, right? We've got Vex, the team that's in Sivo Main for some reason. Um, even though they did qualify for the major, they're only in Sivo Main because they weren't even a team, really, or on anyone's radar when they qualified for that major, and I, I don't think they'd even entered into Sivo yet, so that's why they're in main. But anyway, the team that's probably favored to win, or at least come top three, kind of playing extreme disrespect yesterday. I think they lost more rounds than they should have. But different story with Arctic, taking it very serious. And Orglis have honestly yet to have a, a rifle round that's that's been filled with full armor kits and nades. And you can see another broken one here. No kits. Couple smokes and a couple counter flashes. Well, I guess three smokes.
And then and a heavier inner stack. It looks like they might push that with some uh, Dead Fox and Nay pushing up. They had Flashy supporting on the upper catwalk of inner. It's actually going to be Barcoder who finds a frag. Killing one outside. Saw. Ooh, no fear. Nice flick shot to the man. got a lot of that was Twista, but X7 will find him. There's Dead Fox from Z to get the trade out. And Wriglis maintaining the man advantage. Three on two. Bomb is dropped way back. So it's going to be up to Arctic to just get these kills. Sagerton nearly had himself two. But it now will come down to Saw. It's the man behind E-Box. And he, yeah, he's got no information on these last players. And Flashy hearing that man shoot. Getting the call from his teammate has the information and wins the 1v1. So there you go, a rifle round going the way of Orglis, but it was costly. They lost four players, and you can see their money is pretty rough. Harris are, are going to once again have a better round economically than the CTs. I mean, terrorists have more equipment value than the CTs. That is never a good sign, considering their weapons are much cheaper. Eagle, Mag-7. There is an op on Dead Fox. And an off on Dory. Here's Nay with the Mag 7 pushing up once again. They're going for a two man hit squad. On the lower inner bomb site. Doesn't work out. Barcoder finding. Wow, everybody on Orgulus. Just three quick kills all across the map. X7 trying to even it up with Dead Fox. Two big kills with the op here on round 13. Maybe giving them some hope as they switch sides in just a few more rounds. It's all Sagerton. He's been the man of the match. There's no questioning that, but Dead Fox stepping up three kills. Four rounds now for Orglis. And yeah, as the as the game itself will point out, the counter-terrorists win that round without losing a single member. And that will be good for their economy going into the last two rounds. They can lose this round and still have rifles for the last. Same cannot be said for Arctic, who force up here and, you know, if they don't win this round, they don't have a losing bonus to fall back on. Maybe they can get the bomb down. Uh, but if they lose this round, it, it might end 9-6. Forecast, I would say at this point, is going to be predicting uh, a 6-9 half. Based on the buying habits here of the terrorists. But, of course, if they win, they go the other way. Quite a battle there at Ivy. Dead Fox pulling out that pistol. Finding another 3k after the 3k of last round. So, back-to-back -back hat tricks. Now a quad kill. Twista shooting very quickly with the Tech 9, but not finding the frag. So, Dead Fox, two big rounds in a row. Arctic should be broken coming into this last round. They are. They'll just be another Tech 9 armor force up. See if they take it quick like they did. That one, obviously, at Ivy. Maybe they'll go inner. That's where they've kept the most of their focus. Which also, I mean, Oracle has adjusted to that. They started playing three people in her, which is unheard of for train. They tried to make adjustments against this Arctic team. And I don't even know if they worked, to be honest. The only adjustment that worked is Dead Fox single-handedly just won them these last two rounds. And that's just quality aim. Once again, they try to go quick at Ivy. Barb Coder having to fall back. Molotov going down. P250 comes out. And it is a blender straight into a preheated oven with that Molotov down. And there it is. Dead Fox even finding a kill there. Ended up with 14 kills. 14 and 10 on Dead Fox. And a bit of a comeback from Orgulus. But is it too late? Because Arctic now transferring to the CT side with 9 rounds already. Looked very, very good at the start of that half. I think finally Org Orgulus caught up with them a little bit on, on what they were doing. They knew they were taking it slow. They adapted slightly. And Dead Fox, of course, stepped up. But if it's the pistol round, I mean, maybe there's a chance if Orgles get it, tie it back up 9-9. But if Arctic take that pistol and going on to the CT side on their map pick, you would expect the Finns to be able to close this out and take it over to Cobble. Let's see if I can get some stats on these maps from the... Uh... Oh, why do we not have any data? Waiting on two players to ready up. Barcoder and Nay. Nay did finally get some kills. He actually had a lot of assists, too. It was 4, 6, and 11. So that's not too bad. I mean, we did check. He was like zero. He was about to go secret agent, man. Uh, he had a bit of a comeback there as, as the team turned, turned things around.
And I mean, flashy ends even 9 to 9, 11 11 for No Fear, 12 5 and 11 for Barcoder. Not too bad. Twista, I don't think he got to see much action or was just in first a lot of the time. 5 and 11 on the CT side. Everyone else more or less carrying their weight, but it was, uh, it was definitely Sagerton shining a bit brighter than some of the rest of the members on his team. And of course, guys, this is Sivo Main, and we're going to be casting the Sivo Main playoffs for the next couple of weeks here. Maybe not even that long, just until they're done, obviously. I'm not sure of the time frame, but we do have the Pro League, which is going to be finishing up in Columbus, Ohio, November 6th to 8th for the Season 8 Pro League Finals. I think there are maybe still some tickets. Maybe they just sold out. You can check. I think it's uh, mlg.tv or store.mlg.tv. You can find the information on buying those tickets if you happen to live in that Ohio area or are really rich and are willing to travel from Europe to America. That would be cool. As we still wait for these players. Let's see, what's our... We have another best of three after this as well. So there is quite a bit of Sivo main action today. I'm going to take a look at the brackets. See where these teams are. See who they'll have to face next. And catch you guys up to yesterday when we had Vexed versus... My memory is so bad. Vexed versus... Uh, I'm going to get it. EC Visualize. So, Torpedo. GG. I guess played a game that was cast when I either was not here or maybe we just didn't cast it. I don't know. Uh, but Torpedo have advanced 2-0 uh, up against Shift Play, so that's not really too surprising. Torpedo kind of favored to to win the whole thing. No problem, beat Planet Key Dynamics 2-0. Gameplay DNA beat Team Refuse 2-1. And they actually move on to face Vexed Gaming, who beat EC Visualize 2-0. Uh, so we know one round of eight matchup. That'll be Gameplay DNA versus Vex Gaming. That'll be pretty heavily delayed, though, as Vexed, of course, after the game yesterday, were traveling uh, to Cluj or at least somewhere in Romania, I think, to maybe practice up for another couple days uh, before the Major kicks off. So good luck to them, of course. And, you know, if they don't make it as far as they maybe want to at the Major, they'll definitely come back and have a really good shot at winning a, a nice chunk of change here in Sivo, Maine. Arctic Esports versus Team Orglis. This is the seventh seed in Arctic Esports versus the tenth and Team Orglis, and they're going to move on to face the winner of either Team LDLC White or Kick Esports. So I think Arctic Esports have a, have a pretty good shot. I mean, LDLC White coming in as the second seed, that might be a bit tough to uh, topple. But I don't know. I haven't been as impressed with them as, a, as I thought I would be. But of course, they still got, what, Devil Body, Matend, uh, Toynu, and I'm going to forget somebody, and if they're watching, they might hate me. Who my Body, Devil, Toynu, Matend, some other person? Rip! Rip that other person. I'm going to actually just check. I know this game has started now, but I don't want to leave anybody, anybody out. I'm really forgetting. Fuchs! How can I forget Fuchs? Name that causes us all so much trouble. X7 jump spotting on the upper catwalk, and finally we get to see the, them switch signs. Seems like Orglis will take a similar approach of taking it slow, even on the pistol. They spread out, bomb out towards uh, the mid room. They got two people in the mid room. Dead Fox is going to be waiting to pop flash over. Got a lot of players in Ivy. Sagerson is. Or sorry, in Z, Sagerton is at Ivy. And, oh, and Twista and Saw, those players that I mentioned in Z, they ring out with the first kills of the round. And already with that, Orglis' hopes may be dashed. A couple players are low. Flashy gets a kill. Barcoder now at Ivy, stepping up. No fear and Barcoder pushing in on the other side of the bomb train together. Let's wait for Twista, who is now in a very difficult place. And they bring it back to a two on two. But here's Zori with one more frag. Spots no fear. Or he kind of just needs to buy some time. 
Oh, actually gets pushed. No Fear finds that frag. It comes down to the one versus one. No Fear, though, on nine HP. He does have a P2K. He's just got to hit that headshot. X7, I guess, has a P2K as well. And, of course, he can just shoot anywhere. He can shoot No Fear in the toe. Although, to be fair, it seems like being shot in the chest would hurt less than being shot in the toe. Gets the bomb down and also took a, a couple shots to the chest of X7. So he's down to 14 HP. That should come down to a, a one-shot battle. The bomb, of course, ticking in favor of Orglis right now. There are so many places to check on train. I'll try to just... Oh, not even going to go for the bomb tap. He's going to look behind E-Box. Doesn't have a kit. Starts running, quick hitting up the pace, and no fear will get it. They bring it back from what a three on five. Get it down to a two on two, and then no fear. I mean, no fear, right? Gets a 2k, wins the 1v1 at the end. And that's exactly what Team Orgulus needed to happen. Start off. <laughs> Start off uh, the half strong. And um, of course, make sure the CT economy is not going to be so good. As they're trying to put the blood in the water over on the side of Arctic Esports. Three scouts coming out, two five sevens. Generally, it's the other way, two scouts and three five sevens. But after all, it is train, a map of a very long sight lines. These teams are really trying to play train slow today. They're like helium solo casting. Let's play the slowest we've ever played in Sivo Main. Like, all right, it's a good idea. X7, though, headshot onto Bar Coder. And of course, this is where those terrorists do start to sweat a little bit. You've given up that man advantage. You know there's scouts, and you're probably aware you haven't done any damage to the CTs. There's Nado chiming in with a kill on the Twista. X7 trying to do what he can, jump scouting. Oh, and he gets a headshot onto No Fear. Saw still waiting on someone to either push or drop off. Just on scope. Will spot Dead Fox, who was lit up a little bit. Okay, Saw, yeah, I was going to say, you might want to drop, because that's mostly at this bait. Saganin trying to come over the top of the train onto the bomb site. Flashy spots him. Saw takes off. That's three scout headshots here from the CTs. Zora going to move in. Just going to wait for Nay to push. The AK picked up by Saw, but Dead Fox coming from behind with the Galil. And the CTs trapped in some confusion. Too many things to look at. Orglis and Nay taking turns, peeking out, drawing that fire and attention. The other one landing their shots. Well played. Orgulus now within one round. Should tie up 9-9 here as Arctic are on the full eco. Just a P250 coming out on Saw. And, ooh, right, aftermatch. So we got the fourth seed versus the, the lucky 13th seed coming up next. That'll be aftermatch versus online bots. Aftermatch, I can't remember their nationality. Um, I want to say maybe German, maybe Swedish. We'll find out. Online bots, though, are Estonian. So there's that. Estonia, where you at? Uh, pretty good team, but Aftermatch, kind of a silly name. But those guys are, are really good. That, that is a team that deserves the fourth seed and, and very well. Probably will likely finish in the top four, if not win the whole thing. So, someone to watch out for. Should be a fun best of three coming up after this one. Hopefully, I won't be alone. So, Terrace have worked themselves out a little bit uh, from the middle room. Sagerton will shut down the split from Ivy. He takes out May. Dead Fox pushing up. And he's really the player who stepped up to get Orgulus some of those CT rounds to even have this half be somewhat close. I'll get another kill here. Would have been the team ace if Nay found a frag. And X7, 1v4. Oh, we'll find a nice one. And second kill. One mag gone, two players down. 40 more bullets to work with. But he's just going to decide to save. No kit, has nades, has a rifle, has armor. We'll want to hold on to that to have a bit of a chance uh, coming up in this next round.
Let's see. Ooh, I found it. I did not expect to be able to find Arctic Esports Twitter so easily. At Arctic ESP, in case anyone was curious. Where the map's train, we got Cobble coming up next. And uh, Dust to the Decider. So two of the newer maps on the block here, at least for CSGO's lifespan. And then the old classic Dust 2 for the best of three. As Nay, we'll find a kill. Zori, though, does grab one. And he's picked himself up an AK, and of course X7 having saved. He used his one smoke, but he still has two flashes. A rifle and armor. He might want to save it again. If you can, set up for some exits. Try to uh, make Orgolus's life a little bit more expensive. Not sure how much they'll mind as they've planted the bomb again. Also one. If you wow, if you counted up from last half, eight. This will mark nine rounds in a row for Orgolus. So they have completely turned this around, and it's looking like uh, is train T sighted confirmed. Terrorists win. I think it might be confirmed. Pretty decent round though for Arctic. They saved that rifle again. Zori picked up an AK, was able to save that. So that's a massive boost to the CT economy. It, that alone almost puts them in a place where, with their losing bonus and the fact that a couple players retain some money, it gets them in a place where if they lose this, they can probably get a FAMAS with like some, maybe an M4 rifle round coming out. Uh, even still, you're losing two rounds now to a team you were just absolutely decimating. And you're on the favorite side. You don't want to let it slip just like Orgolus did. Oh, barcoder. Yeah, pull out the fire extinguisher because you are about to go down. Claw has pushed up aggressively. Maybe wants to catch that player out on the retreat. Oh, there's, there's a lot of smoke shenanigans going on right now. Players just standing right next to each other. That's a big nade. And, yeah, okay, saw, he saw that smoke go out, he's like, this player, if he threw the smoke, that means he didn't want to move his position, so expects him to be there, and plays that very, very well. Sagerton gets a kill, fall, saw, found one behind him, and Zori now with the op, getting pressured from Ivy as the Saris have got out, but saw coming back around, finds two, that's three for the round, flashy, does get Zori, can they get the op back in their hands, they do, twist to, to reclaim that, and saw with a big 4k, wins Arctic their first CT round, which are apparently really hard to come by. Uh, it wasn't until the fifth round where Orgbus won on their CT side, and it's actually the, uh, what was that? The sixth round of the second half. Uh, so one round later, Arctic get on the board. Will they be able to get any in a row? It took a while, all the way until the end of the half at round 12, before Orgbus actually got more than one round. They ended up getting four in a row. And the second half got it up to nine in a row. Flashy uh, with an entry. May and Flashy are pretty low, but should be getting the bomb down. Dead Fox lurking outside. Five, two, he brings down Saw and Sagerton. Bomb goes down, Molotov in from the CTs, but it's a 2v5. I mean, what can you do? The answer is nothing. You can do nothing. Two kills from Dead Fox, two kills from Barcoder. Flashy getting one there as well. It's 12 to 10, and no rounds in a row for the CTs. Watch, it'll get to uh, like 15 10, or like 15 11, and then Arctic will get four rounds in a row at the end, just like Orgolus did, and we'll go to OT. I'm calling it now! Upgraded pistols. Thought Orgolus won their first uh, one off wins on their CT side. And, ooh, there it is. Saw getting that first frag. Now Twista inspired. Here's the battle cry from the inner bomb site. Wants to get out and get aggressive. No fear. Definitely in danger of getting caught off guard. Oh, spotting Zori. Zori is trying to bait this player in. But making the smart play. No fear will back away. Not living up to his name, right? He was scared. He backed off because he had fear. And kept himself alive and netted him a frag. Three on three right now. Saw did find another. And he's picked up an AK as well. Smoke's going out. They want to get that bomb down. Sagerton, that was, yeah, well played by Ney. If he kept that Molotov out, he would have been caught by Sagerton making the aggressive smoke push through. Oh, another smoke. There's smoke's everywhere right now. Harris trying to keep those CTs at bay. They've got the bomb on their side of the smoke wall. They know what's up. 
Dead Fox finds one. They know where X7 is. It comes into the one-on-one, -on -one, though. And X7 having pushing through the smoke. No fear. I mean, big key player on that round. He's in middle. He was getting baited in. He could have easily died earlier in the round. And, of course, he was the key player later on. So if he died early, that very well could have been the round for Arctic. So good on him to stay alive, to play with some fear. And it's 13-10. Orglis winning and maybe just going to be able to close this out. Arctic coming in with an okay rifle round. You have the one FAMAS. Most people have nades and you do have a kit on X7. Zori also with an op. But it is Glass Cannon. It, and he goes down. He's the first player to drop. He misses a shot. Flash and capitalizes. Saw caught with a nade out on retreat. Let's it fly but is taken down. Four on three. Man advantage for Orglis. Bomb is planted. Twist to Sagerton and X7. Sagerton's pushing down ladder. Looks like he wants to go for it. I mean, it's getting late, but you go into this next round, that, that losing bonus was reset in round 21, so you're only going to get, what, $2,400 when you get to this next round? That's not going to be enough to really sustain a full buy. I think it would have been worthwhile to save and play for the win instead of forcing up for the win. They've actually got themselves in a, in a really bad situation. If Arctic lose this round, they lose this map. Well... Probably nine times out of ten that happens, but who is to say that that's what will actually happen? They do still have a FAMAS. Glass Cannon FAMAS. Second time we've seen that from the CTs. Once from Orglis, once from Arctic. I'm still just here to scratch on my head and not because it's itchy. But because I'm confused. Smoke's coming out to the outer bomb site. Um, no one's splitting at Ivy. It seems like it's just going to be a three out mid room, but Saw pushing up close with a CZ. Shuts it down and then is shut down by Dead Fox. So we're going to move up to CT Sky. That'll be a pretty strong position. Does have no armor though. Still something to watch out for. X7 just holding out on the uh, Geiger counter. Pushing through now. The smoke drops. He gets a player playing the bomb. The bomb does go down. X7 actually gets three. Somehow able to finish off Nay with the headshot. And now it all falls down to Barcoder, who will drop so Swaggerton. Give him the old crouch peak one dig through the wall. Classic Swaggerton. And the bomb to be defused. And like I said, nine times out of ten, Orglis would just close it out. But of course, there's Arctic getting to 11. Still, though, having lost three people. You preserve two AKs into this round. Swaggerton and Zori will most likely have to drop here. Uh, to get everybody... Fully geared. And it's where he's only 12 and 18. But I, I do feel that he, get, he had a lot of very key op shots on that T side into the mid and late rounds uh, that let them get to those nine. But so far on the CT side, I guess he hasn't had a too good of a showing. The so round 26. Thaw starting off with the first frag. But is taken down by Dead Fox. Prior to that, A brought down Sagerton. Twista. Hasn't been a big fragger, but maybe he can step up now. Costa and Zori each finding a frag. And maybe another spots them coming through the smoke. No fear with the flash. And yeah, he will find a Twista. So into the two on two. I have a slight HP advantage here to the CTs, but they're out of utility. Orgulus still have a couple flashes and even a Molotov to use. But it is Orgulus who needs to make the move to either find these kills or plant the bomb. And they do it. No fear wanting to work his way in. Barcoder right next to him. They're just going to go into the CT back hall and work around the old bomb train. Gotta go quick though. X7 is starting to get curious. They will flash. That's now going to alert them of the presence. They were... I mean, it's hard to say. You want to use flashes in case a player is there, but they would have been better off not making any noise because they throw that flash. It alerts Zori that someone's working in these back halls. Then he hears footsteps, so he's able to turn around and... Hey, what are you going to do? You're running through old bomb train. You're going single file. Zori just stands his ground and sprays him down. Orgulus having won a lot of rounds in a row though. We'll have rifles once more as they try to get out to 15 rounds on that match point to at least force it into overtime and of course Arctic Esports still playing for the win here. Ooh, that nade actually did nothing because are utter garbage. No fear. Gonna bring down X7. Dead Fox. The Sagerton. Zori nicely done. Keeping that uh that aim through the smoke. And that's 
a three on three. Bomb has yet to be planted right now. Barcoder will be spotted in it. At that range, I think his Barcoder's got 98, so he'd survive. Got to the head, but. Oh, wow. Sorry. I guess they expected that flash to, to be a little bit better and to stop the player from pushing on that sign. That they get completely caught off guard. Now Saw pushing up. Can't stand up against Flashy. Here's Twista bringing it to the one versus one. Each of these guys got two kills on the round. And I've got X-Ray on and I hardly noticed that Flashy completely flitched, switched sides to go around what a lot of people call Pop Dog. And he wins the round because of it. 3K for him. And there it is. 15 for Orglis and Arctic Esports are broken. They got to go for pistol armor as they buy to tie here in round 28. Scout on Zori. Glass, glass scout. And look at Flashy just going straight down that ladder. Takes out Twista. Saw there with the nade. And Sangrits and peeking in on Ivy, realizing no one's splitting it that way, but it may not matter. As the outer yard is being charged right now. Nade getting a kill. Dead Fox as well. And Nade moving back into the ladder to wait. Finds X7. And it's Saw in a 1 versus 4 and already the GG. The offensive GG coming out from the terrorist. I guess they're in a pretty commanding position on this round. And, you know, 12 bullets to kill three people, that's almost not enough. Gotta find a rifle, but 13 HP. And he can't do it. Barcoder takes him down. 16 12. Orglis will win the map pick of Arctic, which means we get to flip over to Cobble to pick of Orglis, where they will most likely start on the T side. But the thing about Cobble is slightly T sided. So it could be a 2-0. Let's see if it does go three maps. We'll be in the dust too, but we're going to take a quick break before getting into Cobblestone here in Sevo, Maine, European coverage. I'm Helium. You can hit me up on Twitter at Umbrella. And if you want to come to the Pro League Finals for Season 8, that's going to be in Columbus, Ohio, November 6th to 8th. Check out MLG.TV uh, for, for more information on buying tickets. I think there are still a few available. And we're going to go to a commercial break. See you back here in a couple minutes.